Hey Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. Today's the day the wait is over, giving you a ranking of all 10 Nightwish albums. If you're not familiar with the band Nightwish, we got you covered. We got an episode for you to check out, highly recommend it, gives you all the background details and also pondering thoughts. It also left you hanging with a few other additional uh, talking points like this one, which is giving you our ranking of all their albums. This should not come as any surprise, but just to be extra clear, this is my list. My list, not yours. I wasn't influenced by anyone or anything. This is just my own take, all right? So keep that in mind, but also have fun sharing your thoughts. I'm sure we're all going to have completely different opinions, which is part of the fun of it. So let's enjoy this, but uh, let's also behave. So with that said, Graphic Metal, we like to do things a little bit differently. I like to go a little bit the extra mile of, of you know, the details, right? So with that said, all my rankings, I always have at least five, well, five factors, right? So in this case, we're doing albums. So with that said, you have element number one, which is the art, right? The branding, the, you know, the artistic visual communication part of this. How effective is it at communicating? Number four is the concept. This is a collective unit, right? This isn't a song, a single, or anything like that. This is a collective package. So how effective is it at doing that? And also, what is the actual concept, the message is trying to depict and how well it communicates that? Number three, production. Ultimately, how does it sound? How is it mix? How is it edited? You know, all that, all that wonderful things. Four is the vocals, the presentation of the singing and therefore the message and communicating that through voice, right? And then last but not least is the music itself, right? How the musicianship, the craft that being able to actually, the skill it took to actually create this and I'll put it back out. And then we're going to take all of them, score it as an overall, and then give you our ranking of the actual albums themselves. So, okay, so with that said, now we're going to bring up the whiteboard. The whiteboard will allow you to be able to follow through what I'm doing and give you the visual, you know, story itself of being able to understand how I'm ranking this, right? So you got the, on the bottom right, you got the albums themselves, right? So we got uh, Angels Fall First, you got Oceanborn, Wishmaster, Century, Child, Once, uh, Dark Passion Play, Imaginarium, Endless Forms Most Beautiful, uh, Human Nature, and... Yester wind. As you can see, one through 10 slots, and then there's the breakdown of each of those factors. So again, we're gonna start with the art, the design, and branding. I mentioned in the episode, the documentary that we did on Nightwish, that there is one glowing uh, area that they are they're just terrible at, right? Their greatest weakness, as I called it. Well, I'm just gonna bring it right in front of you right now and get it out of the way, right? It is their art, design, and branding. It's their weakest aspect by a mile, right? And it's a shame because there's absolutely no excuse, right? Uh, Tomas and, you know, the rest of the, the members, like, obviously, Tomas himself, he is an excellent composer, right? And he has worked with a lot of great people. Uh, and them and themselves, right? They are a very imaginative brand. They also have very, po they're, they're poetic, right? Their lyrics are very poetic. And so you can imagine like how easy this actually should have been. There's no excuse for how bad the, the artwork and design the branding is like even their own logo themselves. Like there's very little that they've done with it over the years. It just, it's, there's not much to the, the branding is all I'm saying. So with that said, this is actually one of the harder ones because it's hard to actually like there are a lot of them are pretty darn bad. So I'm going to start with though. Okay. So I'm going to start with, let's see, uh, the worst of them all going to go with dark passion play. Um, so the reason being is because as you can tell, if you're looking at it, uh, is that it is, uh, it's busy, right? And it doesn't, it's not inviting. You can't, because of the way that it's rendered, you can't relate to the elements. It's also very poorly rendered. If you actually, I don't recommend it, but if you actually look closely to it, 
it's really bad. Like, look at the the um, the music sheets themselves that are like floating or flying out or whatever. Like, the details are really bad. Uh, so, and it's also really dark, which is a common theme we'll get to. Uh, but number nine, I'm gonna go with human nature again. That the darkness is just way too dark. It uh, it just messes with our ability to be able to relate. Uh, and appreciate it. Ultimately, this one in particular, because of its opportunity with its concept, right? Human nature. There's a million things that they could have done, right? Yes, the symbols could have been interesting, but then give us that in an effective way. This isn't doing. It's really boring. It's uninteresting. Uh, number eight. Endless forms most beautiful. I'm going to give the edge to this one slightly because at least in this scenario, the concept was there. That was not the issue. The problem was the execution and the rendering. Again, if you actually look at it closely, the details are crap. There's no, there's nothing there. It's just bland. It's uninteresting, right? You can't, you can't relate to it. Furthermore is the fact that you are calling it endless forms most beautiful at bare minimum it could have been our array of colors this is just muted and boring and uninteresting number seven uh imaginarium so this one also is rendered poorly it's super dark again you, the sky is the limit of what you could have done with this. Imagination, use your imagination. This is a really poor decision uh, of, of what was actually depicted. With that said, it does get one slight bonus point that the other ones didn't up to this point, which is at least the album name title is actually embedded in the artwork. You've heard me say this a million times, and I will continue to always say this. That's one of the easiest way to elevate the art is make sure that the, all of it feels feels one packaged unit, right? This does not. Uh, I mean, this actually helps with that, right? Is that even though you can't really even see it because it's so dark, but at least the intent was there, so it gives a slight advantage there. Number six is Wishmaster. Uh, this one, at least layout-wise, is improved but in this case it's like i don't care about what's being depicted i don't care about the swans or the the child i also hate the color scheme in this case it's just it's just boring number five okay yeah <laughs> number five is once so once is a tricky one to it's the only one that's the hardest to actually give a review on because what i'm showing is the original they did do a remake the remake is significantly better still not great but at least it's better basically it's just the actual statue um of the angel right with with a little bit more color tealish kind of blue um and then, of course, again, the title once is actually embedded into into the statue grave, right? So, again, that at least is good. But I also have to ding it significantly for the original, which is one of the worst album covers I've ever seen before. Um, so, number four. Yeah, let's go with with go with the original or the, or the OG. First uh, album, Angels um, Fall First. So, the thing about Angels Fall First is, is that, well, let's just say that... Um, it was simple, right? But in this case, compared to the other ones, that actually works in its favor because at least it's inviting the color scheme, the the set, the the the, uh, the gradient is beautiful, right? So at least that's inviting, and the fact that it's so simple at least allows you to play off of it, like the symbol symbolism you can play onto it at least. So there's at least that going for it. Number three is Century City. Century Child, sorry, Century Child. Um, number three, Century Child. Let's see. This one, conceptually, it's sort of there. I do think that there were so many better options, but at least this one is better than anything else up to this point. The figure helps significantly. At least it also invites the feeling of fantasy, which, oh, go figure. That would have been a smart thing to do. Uh, the only criticism that I have with it is, is that the way that the, the the water the waterfall is just too intense. So number two is I'm I'm shocked by this one. I cannot believe that they actually pulled it off. I didn't know that they actually could. I didn't think it would they had it in them. You know to choose a good designer because keep in mind also all designers have been kind of different. They've kind of go through phases. Um, and so like I'm shocked. Wester, uh, yes sir, wind is actually not too shabby. It's actually an interesting concept. 
It's creative. It matches perfectly with the theme. Whoa, go figure. <laughs> and it's executed pretty well. If you look closely at the details, a little bit Photoshoppy and a little bit could have been a little bit cleaned up. And, but generally speaking, it's actually a decent album. Again, shocker for me. But number one, without question, is Oceanborn. It's their true one album that's actually legitimately a good album. It's one of the better uh, albums in general. The thing that really bothers me so much about this one, though, is, is that this is the blueprint. This is the style that they should have gone for all along. This was it. They nailed it out of the park and they even nailed down their second album. They could have just rode the wave and we would be in a better place. Everything would have been good and dandy, right? But unfortunately, that was it. That this and, and again, this is because poetic. It matches with the symbolic nature of their brand, and it's playful. It's interesting. Um, it's it's fantasy like. Um, it's just it's 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 surreal, right? So it fits perfectly. I also love the blue blue scheme. Hell, what they could have done is something very you know they took taken that, and then each color scheme could have been different for for all ten of them, something like that. But either way. Point is that they never really did that ever again. Wishmaster, right after, they kept a little bit of it, but they really just kind of got rid of so much. And then the rest just, I mean, it, it's not there, right? Finally, with the latest, a little bit more, but in general, uh, that's it. That was our the uh, album covers, uh, the, uh, the album art um, uh, ranking. So, all right, now let's move on to the second uh, parameter, which is the concept. Again, this is the sum of all of its part, right? The idea, the story, the message, and all that. Um, so we're going to start with the bottom. So number 10. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Wishmaster. The reason being is because... like it. So basically, it's the third album, right? And the first two laid out the blueprint. The problem I have with the third one is that it's the one that feels like it was just a repeat, rehashing of the first two. There was very little evolution uh, to it, and for that reason, I think it's the weakest of, of, of them. Uh, number nine, mm -hmm. human nature. Uh, this one, this one shouldn't be that much of a surprise if you actually listen to you know the the. Um, uh, commentary on, on this one and interviews that they'll, they'll tell you that, you know, it took a while for them to get re uh, invigorated in inspiration. So Tomas had mentioned that he needed to, uh, yeah, just, he was a little bit, you know, feeling dried up. Right. And so it actually, I want to say actually him and Troy uh, and, so, and some, some other folks, like they kind of did a side project, right? And I kind of got them going again, the wheels turning and eventually it would lead to human nature. But nonetheless, human nature feels like there's interesting basic structure, right? The concept itself is very interesting, but it just felt flat on the fact that it just, it, it feels like it's missing something. It feels incomplete, right? And I also think it's really poorly, um, like, the flow of it is weak because it basically has, you know, the first half and then the second half. And it's just weird how that works. It doesn't really feel intentional. It feels like half-assed. Plus, the instrumentation orchestration on this one is actually pretty weak uh, compared to what is also capable of they've seen in there. So that's the, the reason for number, uh, number nine. Number eight, this is going to come as a surprise for for a lot of people but i'm gonna go with endless forms most beautiful uh i feel like this one is over it's bloated it's over the top there's just too much to it i think it gets really it gets it deteriorates with the fact that you have so much of a length to begin with but the you know the bulk of the album and then of course you, you the finale is with uh, greatest show on earth which is their most most ambitious song that they've ever done uh and it just it creates this weird dynamic and the rest of the songs far too many of them feel like they're just rehashing of themselves it just feels too repeat um focused and like it just it just doesn't it doesn't excite me as much as some of the other albums number seven uh yeah i'm gonna go with uh the most recent uh yesterwind um so i feel like this one similarly but at least it's better executed but this one also feels incomplete 
It really does. Um, but with that said, there is strength in it in that there are a number of really, really strong songs and a lot more expo exploration happening similar to the human nature uh, compared to endless forms. But it, at the same time, and I also love like how it feels like there's bookends and it ties it up a little bit nicer. Uh, I also think that orchestration instrument, and instrumentation on this one is significantly improved. I think it's actually the strongest overall. But again, it is weird to just like have it just duplicated like that. And I wish, I don't know, it just feels like then a little bit more differences in what it was. Like why not then have like an entire you know, series of new orchestration parts and then fuse it in with the album and create this nice kind of like dialogue story through through the music. But enough of that. Six, uh, also shocker to most people, Oceanborn. Uh, I feel like this one does not hold up nearly as well as you might think. That's, that'll leave it there. I, I find myself, I keep re-listening to it and I keep waiting for it. It's the first album I ever heard. It was the first album I had from them. But it just, it was kind of a disappointment. Uh, it, coming back to it, I feel like it's just not as engaging as it once used to be. It's not holding up as, as strong. Number five, Century Child. Um, so Century Child is, it's a step up right from you know, their blueprint, right? But then they experimented a little bit more. They pushed things a little bit further. So I feel like it's kind of a nice spot for it at, at right in the middle at five. Number four is once. Uh, it perfected that initial uh, blueprint. It was the best of, the, of that initial group. Uh, but I think that at the end of the day, it uh, was exceeded by these other albums. Um Number three, I'll go with Dark Passion Play. Uh, it's it's the, the level of detail and the experimentation. The balance on this thing is just incredible. There's so much variety. It keeps you engaged all the way through despite its length, which leads to number two, Imaginarium. These two are linked in some regard, partially because it's also the same base with... Um, uh, with Annette, but in general, they were the most ambitious, you know, concepts. But I think Imaginarium is even tighter of a message and a story. If from beginning, middle, and end, it feels like one whole unit. You could even argue it's like one whole full song all in itself. Uh, and I like it a little bit more how it kind of just flows uh, to it. Uh, but number one, I think is an easy call because of this band being a unique band in that they created a whole new unique s sound for them that's unique to them. Yes, they got inspired, but at the end of the day, Nightwish's blueprint was theirs. And, you know, Tomas should be respected and honored for that. And with that said, the debut is the best of all the concepts solely for that reason that when it came out, it just it shocked. It was shocking. It was amazing. It was like nothing really had been heard like this again. Yes. Not saying that there wasn't, you know, elements of this in the past, but at the end of the day, fused all together, all the elements coming together. This was something fresh and new and exciting. And therefore it should be honored as, as number one. Uh, next, let's move on to factor number three, which is the production, right? Ultimately, how does it sound? The editing, the mixing of it. At number 10, I'm going to stick with uh, Wishmaster. It's, it's the flattest of all of them. It has, it's not quite as dense and robust in, in production. Uh, number nine, this again, this is going to shock people, but I'm going to go with Oceanborn. And here's the reason why. So... The thing about me with this whole realm of symphonic metal, there is one particular characteristic, right, that it can be very common, and especially with some of the, the legends, right? It's my nitpick. I hate when the keyboards are the shiny front and center sound in the board. Uh, it's my personal preference. I hate that. I, it, to me, the keyboard should never be the primary. It should be the accessory or the blend. It should be the fusion. It should be the add-on. Uh, it should be one of the instruments, but it should not be the primary. And an ocean board, that's my biggest knock on it. Number eight, Endless Forms Most Beautiful. 
both these two are probably shockers to, to most people. But I feel like, again, especially with the surrounding albums, especially for the newer albums, this is, again, the weakest of all the, the, the of the production ones. It just feels like, again, some of the decisions that were made conceptually were out of whack. And I feel like things don't hit uh, as, as powerful as, as the other albums, even within with around it. Number seven... I'll go with the the debut, Angels uh, Fall First. It's good for a debut and for 1997. It's pretty darn good, actually. But it is the first, and so they end up, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit better. feels a little bit flat, even though I, I kind of have always been a sucker for, for the older um, production. But nonetheless, number six. I'll go with uh, Century Child. I think it, you know, it's close, right? But I think that it's one knock on it is is that it's both a good thing and a bad thing. The bass is very high, uh, which again makes it a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker, uh, denser. But at the same time, I feel like it, it's not as balanced uh, as effectively. Number five, I'll go with the most recent in Yesterwind. Uh, it is, it's pretty solid. I mean, you can't really go wrong with 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 any of of these last five, but I feel like it could have been a little bit richer, and I and I have the reason why, and, and I'll get to it in a moment. Number four, I'll go with. You can't really go wrong too much, but I'm gonna go with Imaginarium. I think the reason why is because so this is the very first time that the full on symphony in orchestra was invited completely in, right? Uh, and I feel like the way that it's mixed, it would end up being proven to be a little bit stronger. But generally speaking, it was it was pretty darn effective. I do think that it's a smidgen when push comes to shove better than Westerwein, but it's, it's close. You, they, they both are, uh, I would say on the same level, actually. Uh, number three, I'm going to go with once. Uh, it's close. It's, I mean, it's, it's really good, right? It's definitely, there's nothing wrong with it, right? It's, it's, it's well produced. Number two, dark passion play. Uh, I think that the fact that there isn't quite as much orchestration, and I think that what I think that I like about the, the production on Dark Passion Play is that, no pun intended with the name, I do feel like it has a little bit more of a stronger, heavier sound, which in return, I feel like it allowed it to have that, that, that s- symmetry of the heaviness and the romantic nature of it, and it really felt very warm and inviting. But with that said, I to me, it's an easy decision that human nature is the pinnacle at the peak of their overall sound and mixing. It is incredibly strong. It's one of the it's one of the best sounding albums I've ever heard. It's just it's so rich. It's just it, it just brings you in and it's so strong. It's so powerful uh, and beautiful. It's just, it's a, it's, it's a work of art. I absolutely love it. So right. Next is the vocal performance. So the singing, uh, how does it evoke and communicate the story through the voice, right? The singing, uh, number 10, I'm going to go with ocean born again. It's going to shock, <laughs> shock virtually everyone. Uh, I actually find there's another uh, nitpick that I have. Um, so Taria does have all of the three singers. She is the one that does have this like extra high note peak um, in octave that she can reach that I get annoyed with. I'll just leave it there. I'm not a big fan of super high pitch uh, singing. Uh, so and I feel like this is the one where it's it's at the, it's at the highest. With that said, Wishmaster would be number nine for that same kind of reason. Uh, they're both you know pretty similar on that on that level. Um, number eight, uh, I'll go with Endless Forms, Most Beautiful. And the reason why is less about like a floor herself, but it's actually the fact that I feel like they double or triple down too much on floor. Yes, I get it. You bring in the new, exciting, new, you know, vocal tool, but at the same time, it just felt like everyone else 
took a secondary or tertiary, you know, type of uh, a level. I mean, there's almost no Marco at all in this. Uh, Troy's even, you know, they're not getting used. I, I don't think so anyway, so I remember. Maybe a little bit here and there. Maybe obviously on the uh, the greatest show on earth. But generally speaking, it's pretty much just all floor. And so in comparison to the others, I feel like, and I feel like floor ends up actually exploring and experimenting more on some of the other ones. Uh, number seven. Uh, the debut Angels Fall first. Uh, I, I I actually, I really like it though. I, I like the fact that, I mean, maybe it's that Tari is not quite, she's super young at this point. Uh, first time, you know, singing. and uh, But I actually like that. It's a little bit softer. Uh, she doesn't reach, you know, the super high uh, pitch as much. And I just feel like overall it allows her a better balance on, on, the, on the plane. And so I really, I really like that. Uh, number six, I'm gonna go with Century Child. It's borderline because I think it, I think it was a step in between then, between like the Oceanborn Wishmaster and then Angels Fall First. It's a little bit stronger um, overall. I also think that you know there's a little bit more. I, the other thing with both Century Child and Angels Fall First, I do like that there's also the balance between. You know, the, the, the male singer and the female singer. Number five. Hmm. I'll go with once. Uh, it's it's perfect, right? But I just ultimately think that there's more experimentation on these other four. So really that's that simple. But it's incredible. It's it's perfect, right? Number four. Um, I'll go with Yes Rewind. It is it's really also extremely strong, but I think that there's extra points it gets because, first of all, the experimentation. I've been waiting for a very long time for a song like Lantern Light. Unbelievable. I love it. Uh, it's probably my favorite song on the entire album. It's the last track. Uh, but I just, I love it. Floor does a sensational job. I just, I, that was, I've been waiting for that kind of song. But in general, overall, you know, Troy does a lot of great things. I know people kind of nitpick on the fact of like, why is Troy playing so much so much of a role, especially with singing? But I think ultimately it's a great balance. Yes, of course, I wish there was a little more, you know, baritone and angry kind of vocals, which is kind of rendered uh, void on here for the most part. But I think that Floor does so much experiment, experimentation on a skill level. I'm just amazed uh, by, by, the, by the craft from a vocal standpoint. Number three, Dark Passion Play. Uh, I, I'm a huge sucker for, I think the perfect combination was actually Annette and Marco. I love their dynamic. I feel like their voices just work really well together and they play, they feed off one another. Amazing. And the songs are amazing to be able to fuse with all the experimentation. There's so much variety. The Islander obviously is one of the iconic songs. And then I'll bring in number two, uh, Imaginarium again. They're very, they're similar in nature. There's a lot of exploration. I love the overall skill skill um, being displayed here in the case with number two or with imaginarium you got obviously the fact that there's the uh there's the uh, the blues right the um uh, the jazz song right slow slow whatever it is uh it's um it's perfect right it's actually the most unique song in their entire catalog and so i like that there's so much that you hear on these two albums that you don't on, on any of the other ones up to this point, which leads me to the best vocal performance without question though, for me personally, is human, uh, human nature because for one thing, it's the one at the symmetry between all the linkage between the old and the new, meaning that there's obviously floor, but then you also have, you still had Marco and then you also had uh, Troy. And so you had the fusion of all three. Now, unfortunately, my nitpick is, is that I do feel like Marco gets pushed aside significantly. Uh, but in general, there's so many amazing vocal performances and unique songs. I mean, the most obvious being like Harvest and Tribal. And tribal. I mean, Tribal alone. I know it's risky for them to do almost like kind of like Sepultura, uh, Roots, Bloody Roots kind of, you know, type linkage of a new metal-ish kind of tribal kind of song, but I feel like it fits perfectly. It's amazing to fuse in live, and it's just a change of pace. I like that. I just love... 
overall um, the, 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 the skill that was on display there. So. All right, next, let's move on to the last, the fifth uh, you know, factor being the music itself, right? The songs, the craft, the, the skill uh, presented on these, on these albums. So I'm going to start with number 10. I'm going to stick to my guns with Wishmaster. Uh, I just think that, I mean, I do love Phantasmic a lot. I love that song. Kingslayer is good. Wishmaster itself is good. But overall, there's a lot of duds on this song, on this album. Number nine, Shock the World Again, Endless Forms Most Beautiful. It just doesn't work for me. There's too many songs that sound the exact same. I don't like how th just the weird dynamic of, of the overall pace of it. I don't find myself ever coming back to it. I do love uh, the ambitious nature of, you know, the, the greatest show on earth. But other than that, Endless Forms Most Beautiful, I do listen to that song a lot. But generally speaking, it just, it, 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 it just it's not inviting to me to come back to. Number eight. I'm going to go with the most recent, Yes or Wind. Uh, just because at the end of the day, I haven't had as much time with it. It has it has a disadvantage there because unfortunately for that reason, like I just, I need more time to let it soak in. I can already say that I do love a number of the songs. I already mentioned um, that I really like uh, the Lantern Light uh, in particular, but in general, oh, and I also love the orchestration as I meant to instrumental uh, orchestral. Uh, pieces are, are are by far the the best when I've done this. Uh, so, but in general, there are I don't like the middle so much. I like the beginning and ending, but in general, uh, I need more time with it. So I'll leave it there for now. Number um, seven, Human Nature. As as I already talked about, there's some great things about it. there's some amazing songs, but I do think that there's some actually weak songs. And I also hate the orchestration on this on this, and it's just weird how that come how that played out. Uh, number six, Oceanborn, another surprise I'm sure. It would probably be totally different for a lot of people, but as I already said, it's not inviting to me anymore. Like I just I don't know what it is, but like I, I maybe it is the keyboards. I just find that even songs I used to always listen to all the time, maybe I've also listened to it too much, but I don't think so because there's plenty of albums that I've worn out to death and I just eat, I always come back to it. This one, I just, I don't find myself coming back to it as much. Um, it's, it's still good. It's 100% good. It's just, I just, it's just not as strong. Number five, I go with debut. I do like the debut more. I just, sh shockingly, every time I come back to it, it feels fresh and exciting and I just, I don't know. I just, I love, I love, I don't like the last song and the four parts to it. I, but the rest of it, eight, nine of the songs are unbelievable. I just, I, I, I keep coming back to it. I think it's really, really, really well done. Number four, Century Child. It's, uh, it's close, right? You, it's really, really close. I think number three then is once because it's just a smidgen stronger right? They're, they're close though, but once is perfected a little bit better. And there's, you know, I mean, you know, Ghost Love Score is, I mean, probably, you know, one of the best songs, uh, it just in general, there's a, there's just a little bit more strength in, in once. And then you can't go wrong with then, you know, either of these other two, I'll go with Dark Passion Play and then Imaginarium, uh, and then Imaginarium, it's, um, again, you really can't go wrong with, with either of them, but I think I'll give the edge slightly to Imaginarium because I do feel like, you know, there are songs that I just keep coming back to. Uh, I do like the collective sum of all of its parts, um, and I feel like it has the most balance, which is interesting because I feel like it's the softest album they've ever done. Uh, but it somehow ends up being the most balanced as a result of that. But you really can't go wrong with their passion play either. They're both, they're so, they're neck and neck. They're, you can't go wrong with either. All right, let's get to it. The overall ranking, all right? So now we're going to, you know, tally up uh, scores. Just keep in mind that you actually want the lowest score here. Um, ultimately, that's how I scoring it. And also keep in mind, too, that... The way I do it for the ranking is a little bit different for an individual album in comparison to here being a collective discography of a band because now I'm comparing them to each other. So it works a little bit differently. So with that said, number 10, uh, the, the worst album, uh, according, to, according to me, uh, <laughs> is, yeah, 
It's definitely Wishmaster. Uh, with a score of, looks like 45. Uh, it's, yeah, I I just, it's it's the weakest one. There's only four songs that I, I, I really like and I keep coming back to. Otherwise, the rest are just kind of mediocre. Feel like it was a repeat of what they've already done. It just didn't really... It just didn't really work too well, too much. Uh, number nine. Hmm. Okay, it looks like okay, it's endless forms most beautiful. Oh man, I'm gonna get crucified for, 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 for this. Uh, it's um, 41, 41. Um, I shouldn't say crucified. Actually, from the band is what I should say because actually, it feels like the band like raves about this one still to this day. It feels like they really, really like this one. But I find it to be a disappointment. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that they put all their eggs into the basket of a floor. There's not much balance vocally. I feel like songs in general, there's very little balance. There's really only a soft song, a fast song, and then you have the the last, you know, the, the um, a greatest show on earth. That's pretty much what sums it up in a nutshell. So I, I just, I'm not a big fan of it. Number eight, this is where I'm going to get crucified. Yeah, I'm going to get crucified for this one. Ocean Born. Number eight, <laughs> probably very different for most people with a score of 32, right? Yeah, 32. Um, so that's going to, I'm sure that's going to be very different for the people. I already said, I just, I'm not finding myself coming back to it anymore. And I re-listened to it a number of times leading up to a number of these episodes. And uh, I didn't, I didn't find it as enjoyable as I, sh I shockingly thought that I would. Um, but it is what it is. That's just, that's what it is. Uh, human nature is number seven. No surprise there because it kind of is the bookends on, on the scoring. Looks like 27 score. Um, it's uh, it's good, uh, but just not complete. That's really what, what, what it comes down to. Uh, and then Yester Wind is, is number six uh, with just a smidgen ahead at 26. So that is, it's, it's good. Uh, but so who knows where it will end up it, you know down the road but right in the middle makes sense at the time being there's some really really good songs i think people are taking it for granted um they're overlooking it and they're not taking the time to really appreciate the finer details of it so i definitely i definitely recommend doing that number five is angels fall first um it is with a score of 24 um looks like it's actually shared with Century Child is also 24. Um, uh, I could go either way. I mean, I, I have pros and cons to, to, to picking one over the other. I mean, they're, 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 they're tied, right? But I I think I, I'd, I'd give the slight as the Century Child because I think it's a little more polished, right? Uh, number three and number two is also, they're tied as well. Hmm. Uh, Dark Passion Play and Once both have a score of 20. And you can't go wrong with either of them. They are different in nature, obviously. Completely different than eras because of the different singers. Um, so, hmm. Okay. I, I will give the edge to once only because, and I could be wrong by the by this statement, but I believe that it is the highest selling um, album, and so I, I'll give the edge for that reason. Um, but at the end of the day, they're both they're both on the same, they're both well executed and amazing, and I, I love them both. But Imaginarium is my top pick for the greatest album of Nightwish up to this point, uh, with a score of of 16 so by a pretty significant margin uh to me it's a no-brainer for me uh, i said it's a, it's a little bit of a surprise because ironically it's their softest uh song uh, album but i just feel like it's the most complete i said before i love how it the beginning middle and end and how everything ties together i like the the in introduction completely fully of of the orchestration even more so than anything that them up to that point I like the theme and the structure of it. I feel like, you know, that the dark um, symbol is symbolic, uh, you know, messages is right in their, their alley. Uh, I hate the album cover, but again, I can't knock on it too much because as I've already mentioned, almost all of them are terrible. 
So I can't really, it's a weird thing to, to factor in or not to factor in. Um, but I feel like I love the spoken word, you know, part two and the way it's used, unlike um, some of the other times it's been used. Uh, so I just feel like overall the production is amazing. It's just overall, it's just, to me, it's it's their perfect album. Uh, it's probably going to be different from this whole list. It's probably going to be different from others. And that's what's exciting about it. So please let me know what you thought. Uh, this is mine. Uh, and yeah, so exciting news. So obviously in a couple of days, I'm going to be giving you then the Nightwish, um, my take on the, the singers themselves, right? So I'll do that episode very shortly. But what I'm actually working on right now that I'm super excited about is actually Blood Incantation. So I'm going to be doing a whole kind of doc, you know, um, uh, video essay kind of series episode on Blood Incart- uh, Incantation. Uh, super excited. So all you, you know, death metal fans, you know, get, 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 you know, get ready and, and anxious for that. Um, already, you know, enjoying the, the latest album, but in general, it's uh, it's gonna be super exciting and can't wait uh, for that. That will be coming soon, uh, probably beginning of next week, is would be my guess. So, until next time, check out some of our other videos. I'm Vitor Von Wright, and you've been watching Graphic Metal. Cheers, and keep on rocking. <laughs>